Hello everyone. We have created a new playlist. In this playlist, we will discuss few famous machine learning model from scratch and in code, like from importing the data and cleaning it, then selecting the variable and fitting it in machine learning model and discussing it in detail. So today, we will talk about the linear regression model. It is one of the main and the simplest model in machine learning. Before we start, here are the few details about DataMonk. In DataMonk, we help students to prepare for interview and provide knowledge of SQL, Python, statistic, and machine learning. This is our website www.thedatamonk.com. Now let's get back to our linear regression model. So for linear regression model, the most important thing is to remember that we can only predict continuous variable, not categorical variables. Basically, linear regression is used for finding linear relationship between target and one or more predictors. One more important thing to remember in linear regression is that the target variable should always be the dependent variable and the predictor variable should always be the independent variable as we are finding the relationship between them and predicting the dependent variables. So in linear regression, there are two types of model, simple linear regression and multiple linear regression. In simple linear regression, there is only one predictor and one target variable. And in multiple linear regression, there is multiple predictors and one target variable. Now in 8th or 10th class, we all have seen and studied the line and its equation in coordinate geometry. It was y equal to mx plus c, where y was our target variable which was dependent variable, m was our slope of the equation and x was our predictor which was independent variables and c is our constant. So in simple linear regression, the model is based on this equation only, y equal to mx plus c. But in everyone's mind, there should be one question. How do we find the M? So in simple linear regression, the core idea is to obtain the line that best fit the data. The best fit line is one for which total prediction error should be as small as possible, where error is the distance between the point and the regression line. Now we are familiar with the definition of SLR. So we will look into example and conclude that how SLR work. Let us suppose we have a data set which contain information of relationship between number of hours studied and the marks obtained in the exam. So many students have been observed and the data is collected. So this is our training data set. Using this data, we have created the regression line. But how we have choose the line? We have compared it with number of regression line and selected a line which have minimum error. So the ideal value of C and M must be chosen so that they minimize the error. So in simple linear regression, we perform number of iteration to find the value of M where the error or residue is the lowest. After we find the value of M and C, we draw the regression line, hence building the model. So from this, we can predict the marks obtained by the student by only needing number of hours he or she studied. Now let's look from the scratch how we build a model of simple linear regression and multiple linear regression. Now we will build a model that will predict the price of old car based on its features using the simple and multiple linear regression. So this is our problem statement, predict the price of second hand car. Our target variable is price and predictive variable are age of the car, fuel type, kilometer driven and etc. So whenever we start with the data, our first step will be to explore the data. So first of all, we will import the libraries of Panda and NumPy. Then we have read the data which was stored in our desktop and remove the duplicate values in the data. So one row have been deleted because it was duplicate data. And this is our data head. There are all the column and their details. Now with the info function, we find the number of missing value the column has. So you can see our data has maximum 1435 entries and each column has different non-null values like age. It is 1433 means that it has two missing value. So from this function, we can directly remove the column if it has missing value greater than 30%. Now from the function describe, it helps us to find outliers and see the statistical distribution of the data. As you can see in the age column, our minimum value is 1, which is not possible for the car. So it is our outlier. 
and same four kilometer it is one so this is also our outlier then one of the most important function which help us a lot is n unique it help us to differentiate between categorical and continuous variables as you can see the values like three two two they all are categorical variables and which are two thirty six one two six three they are continuous variables so we can assume that if the value is less than 20 it is categorical value or it is greater than 20 then we can consider it as a continuous variable now after studying the data we will visualize this by using bar plots and histograms so for categorical predictor variables we use bar plot and for numerical predictor variable we use histogram so we will plot the bar chart of all the categorical variables like fuel type hp automatic and door so fuel type is divided into three parts cng diesel and petrol and the car in our data is of maximum petrol and for numerical data we have plot the histogram so as you can see this is our histogram for all the numerical variables like price age weight and kilometer as you can see they all are bell curve data and somewhat skewed data like price is positive skewed age is negative skewed but you can also see from the histogram the outliers so as you can see we have some car at thirty thousand, which are which are our outlier as it is separated from major population of the price of the car and so as in weight some car has the weight of 1400 to 1500 but majority has in between of thousand to eleven hundred then after plotting individual graph for each variable we will find the visual exploration of relationship between the variables as you can see we have two type of variable continuous and categorical so we can have difficulty in plotting the visual exploration between the relationship of the variables so to ease that we have mentioned it already like for continuous versus continuous we can only use scatter plot or for continuous versus categorical we can use bar plot or box plot and for categorical versus categorical we can only use bar plot now we will plot some graph finding the relationship between price and other variables so this is our scatter plot for age kilometer and weight against the price and as you can see both are continuous variable so that we have used scatter plot and in previous histogram we have already noticed that at 30000 of price we have a outlier so this was our outlier which is separated from the population and same for the weight above 1400 they all are our outlier so by using the visual exploration we can easily find the outliers now the most important thing while building the machine learning model is the statistical feature selection like selecting the variable which we will choose while building the model so it's easy like for continuous versus continuous we use scatter plot and categorical versus categorical we use bar plot so in this for continuous versus continuous we use correlation matrix this is our formula for correlation matrix and for the correlation value if we are getting the value greater than 0.5 or less than minus 0.5 then we can consider that it is a good relation between the two variables like why we choose minus minus show that it is inversely proportional to that variable and positive show that it is directly proportional to that variable so we so we will perform the correlation function here come the matrix so we can see the price column as it is our target variable so as you can see for price to price it is one age to age it is one so if it is same it will be one always so we can neglect that but for price and age it is minus 0.87 which show the strong inverse proportional relationship and for kilometer it is also minus 0.56 so they all are good if they are above 0.5 or less than minus 0.5 as it show that if our age of the car increases the price of the second hand car will decrease so it show the minus relationship therefore we select the variable which are greater than 0.5 so here come over all the variable which are greater than 0.5 which are age kilometer and weight and one thing in correlation matrix you also notice that they do not have all the columns they don't have our door column or fuel type column because because in correlation matrix it automatically select the continuous variable only but you all are thinking that how can we find the relation between 
continuous versus categorical and select the optimal variables. So for continuous versus categorical, we use ANOVA test. So as you all know about hypothesis testing, but if you don't know, don't worry. We have separated video on statistic about hypothesis testing. So in hypothesis testing, we are considering the H0 assumption, which always neglect what we are thinking. So we are assuming that there is no relation between the given variable and performing the ANOVA test. Now, our H0 was that fuel type and price are not correlated. So if it comes greater than 0.05, then that means it has high possibility of not correlation. So we have performed ANOVA test for all the categorical variables and we have compared it with the price. So like in this, so you can see in automatic type, it comes 0.19, which means that it is 19% sure that automatic type and the price are not correlated. As for 0.07, it also means that it is 7% sure that fuel type and price are not correlated. So by using the ANOVA test, we can consider the matricular HP and doll as they are all less than 5% value. So we have selected the optimal variables that will affect the price of the car by using an overtest and correlation metric. Now, after selecting the variable, the most important thing is to reprocess the data like treating the missing value and treating the outlier in the data. So how can we treat the missing value in the data? First of all, let's see how many missing value are there in the data. So for age, there are two missing value. And for fuel type, there are four missing value. And for CC, there are also two and so on. So there are two ways for treating the missing value. First is we can delete the row that contain the missing value, but it is not optimum. So we will choose our second method, which is treating the missing value in each column. We replace the missing value by using the interpolation. As you can see in our age, we have used interpolate method equal to linear. What does linear mean? Linear means that if our data is like one comma missing value comma three. So we will choose the mean of previous and next number, which is like one plus three by two, which comes two. So we will put the two value in that missing column. And we can also fill the missing data by the median of all the data. So there are two ways for treating the numerical variable and as for and as for categorical variable, we can use interpolate method equal to F fill. F fill means first fill. That means that if our data is like CNG, comma, missing value, comma, petrol. So we can fill the missing value by CNG as it is first fill. And we can also replace the null value by the mode in categorical variable. Now, after treating the variable, we will check our missing value which comes 0, 0, 0 in all the variables. Now for the last step of data pre-processing, we have to convert the categorical value into numerical data. As in our model, we cannot consider the categorical data. So if our data is ordinal variable, we use it by simple mapping. Like, like if it is comparison between two, like good and bad. So we can assign good equal to one and bad equal to zero and we have to do it manually. But for nominal variable, we have a function called get dummies. So in get dummies, as you can see, our fuel type was nominal data. So it has converted into fuel type CNG, fuel type diesel and fuel type petrol and assigned it zero and one. So like in this car, our fuel type is diesel. And for this also our fuel type is diesel. And if it is CNG, then it will be like one, zero and zero. And if it is petrol, it will be like zero, zero and one. Now after all cleaning and feature selection, our data is ready for simple linear regression and multiple linear regression. So for all machine learning models, we actually don't use the full data for creating the model. And some data is randomly selected and kept aside to see the accuracy and how good the model is. This is known as testing data. And the remaining data which is used for building the model is known as training data. Typically, we use 70% as a training data and 30% as a testing data. But sometimes you have small data. So you can use 80% as training data and 20% as testing data. 
So for simple linear regression, we have used 80% as a training data and 20% as a testing data. You can see this in test size equal to 0.2 and for random state equal to 42. It is actually just a number. It tells us by assigning a number to random state, it select different rows of data for our training data and testing data. So for test size, we usually go from 0.2 to 0.3 as if test size is greater than 0.3 then our model will be underfit. And if it is less than 0.2, our model will be overfit. So for simple linear regression, we pick age as our predictor because it is the most correlated with price as it was minus 0.87. So we will run this. So now our data is divided into four part, X train, X test, Y train and Y test, where X train and X test has the data of age and y train and y test has the data of price with ratio of 0.8 and 0.2. So we will check the shape of our data, which is in x train and y train. There are 1148 rows of data and in x test and y test, there are 287 rows of data. So from 287 rows, we will find our accuracy and from 1148 rows will build our model. Now we are creating our model for simple linear regression. So first of all, we have imported linear regression from linear model, then created our model of linear regression. So it is ledge model. Then after creating the model, we have fed our data of X train and Y train because we build our model on the train data. So we have fit it in LREG. So after fitting the data, our regression line has been formed. So we will predict our Y data from the X test data. So there is our prediction. So after that, we will use metric to see how good the fit is and what is the accuracy of our data. So now we will run this. So in the first line, we have checked the goodness of the fit, which comes as 0.76. So it means that 76% of the data is fitted in our regression line. Usually R2 value come less in simple linear and multilinear regression because it gives the linear relation between the two variables. After that, we have measured the accuracy on the testing data. We always measure the accuracy on testing data. Why not training data? Because on training data, we have built the model. So we can't check the accuracy. But on testing data, we have used the prediction and Y test as to find the accuracy of the model. So we got two accuracy, mean accuracy and median accuracy. Mean accuracy is 89.06 and median accuracy is 91.28. Median accuracy always come greater than mean accuracy because in mean accuracy, we consider outliers, but in median accuracy, we do not consider the outliers. Therefore, we will get our data set by using age, we have predicted the price of the car and this is our predicted price and this was our actual price of the data. But we always have to use n fold cross validation while finding the accuracy of the data because sometimes accuracy can come low or as high as possible because of some favorable data set. Therefore, we will use n fold cross validation. So in n fold cross validation, we split the data into n part. Then iteratively use one part for testing data and other part for training data. Let's say with the image. So in this, imagine this is our full data set. So we have split it in, into five parts, k equal to five. So it will be split it as 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, and 20%. Therefore, if we use 80% as training data and 20% as a testing data. So we will perform five different set as it is five fold cross validation. So in first test, we choose two, three, four, five as tra training data and testing data as one. And in second test, we use second, second part as testing data and one, three, four, five as training data. So in all five, we use different combination of training data and testing data. And after finding the testing accuracy, we will find the mean of all the accuracy, which will be our final accuracy of the model. So like in first model, it comes as 92%. In second, it comes as 90%, then 91, then 87, then 88. So the mean of all this will come as 89.6%. 
which will be our final accuracy. Now you are familiar with what is n-fold cross-validation. So we will see the code of n-fold cross-validation and how does it work. So first of all, we have created a function to find the accuracy score of the data, which is same as the accuracy formula. Just we have to return the accuracy from this. Then we will import make scorer from the matrix to find the better accuracy. Then after that, we have imported cross well score, which is cross validation score from the model selection library, then perform the tenfold cross validation. So from this, our data will be divided into 10 part with each different combinations. So as you can see the accuracy for 10 tests in first test, it come 85.67. Then it, then in second, it come as 85.04. Sometime we get the lowest accuracy and sometime we will get the highest accuracy. Therefore, we will take the mean of all these 10 value and get the final average accuracy of the model, which will come as 87.11. Therefore, this is our final accuracy of our model. And we can say that our model is 87% correct. Then after that, we will find the slope and intercept for the regression line, which will come as slope will be negative, which is minus 170.65. And the intercept is 20,251. In this, slope is negative, which shows that if age increases, price of the car decreases, as it is second-hand car. Therefore, from the slope and intercept, we can form our line equation, which will come as price equal to minus 170.65 into age plus the intercept, which will which is 20,251. Therefore, if we have to predict the car price, we only need the age of the car. After that, we will visualize the line of the best fit. Therefore, this is our line of the best fit as it cover most of the data with the minimum error. After that, we can see the top 10 errors made by the model. Our top error made by the model is 72% incorrect, but most of the error in our model is around 0 to 20%. Therefore, our model is correct. So that's all about simple linear regression. Then after that, we will see what is multiple linear regression. In simple linear regression, we use only one variable as our predictor. But in multiple linear regression, we can use multiple variable as our predictor. But now all of you are wondering how our model look like, then how can we find the line of the best fit? So we will look into all that. But first of all, we will see the formula and calculation of multiple linear regression. The formula of the multiple linear regression will give us y equal to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 and so on depending on how many variables you are considering plus the constant and our model will look like this if we consider only two variable then it will be our 3d model and if we consider three variable then it will be 4d model and so on depending on how many variable we are considering it will be n plus one dimension model as you can see our y axis is our price and x and z is our age in kilometer now to build a model first we have to split the data into training and testing set so in this we are splitting as 70 percent as training data and 30 percent as testing data and we are considering all our variable as our predictor and our target variable is price now we have split the data into four set x train x test y train and i test and now we will check the shape of the training and testing data set after checking the shape we will quickly build a model for multiple linear regression as you can see it is same as simple linear regression but it depend on the value of the predictor as in this there are multiple predictors so it will consider as multiple linear regression now we will build the model our model has been created and we have fitted and predicted the value in the prediction. After that, we will check the goodness of fit of our training data and the accuracy of our testing data. So as you can see in this, our R2 value come as 86%, but in simple linear regression, it was 77%, therefore increased by 9%. And our mean and median accuracy is 90 and 92%, which is also increased in comparison to the simple linear regression. And our data set will look like this because we have considered all this as our predictor and this is our target variable and we have predicted the price of every car which come as this. Now we will see the slope and intercept of the regression plane and in this we will get multiple values of the slope 
as they are multiple predictor so for the first value this is the slope of edge this is the slope of kilometer this is the slope of hp and so on and the value of intercept is minus 6954 then after this we will check our error like how much error our model gives by seeing the top error of our model which come as 103 percent means our predicted price is double than the price and after that we will create the histogram and we can see that our most of the value is in 0 to 20 percent error therefore our model is very good but we got one error in handed which we which we will consider as an outlier we can also see this in the box plot graph as you can see our one value is greater than handed and most of the value is in 0 to 20 percent only therefore that's all about the multiple linear regression there are some frequent asked question related to the multiple linear regression like what makes a multiple regression multiple a multiple regression consider the effect of more than one explanatory variable on some outcome of interest as you have already seen we have considered many variable as our predictor our second question is why would one use a multiple regression over a simple linear regression so it is clear that a dependent variable is explained by only one variable as you have already seen in our model our r square and accuracy both are high in comparison to the simple linear regression and our last question is what does it mean for a multiple regression to be a linear in a multiple linear regression the model calculate the line of best fit that minimize the variance of each of the variable included as it relates to the dependent variable there are also non-linear regression models involving multiple variables such as logistic regression quadratic regression and probit models we will see logistic regression in our next video and cover it in detail thank you that's all for the linear regression hope you like the video for more good videos do like and share the video